Hi. In this video, I'm going to repair an Asus laptop that won't charge and won't turn on. The owner of the laptop handed it over without screws, he told me that he opened it to check the battery, he suspected the battery was disconnected. The model of this laptop is X540M. Let's connect the bench power supply. This laptop uses a 19.5 volts charger, so we set the bench power supply to 19.5 volts and 3 amps. When we connect the power supply, we can see that it does not consume anything, no even 1 mA. Here is the charging LED and we see that it does not turn on. It does nothing, it has no consumption when we press the power button. These are the screws that we have to remove before opening the laptop. The owner handed it over without screws. I just hope he didn't make a mess inside. Insert the opening tool carefully and release the hooks that hold the two parts together. Lift the keyboard gently and carefully, because we have to disconnect the touchpad cable and the keyboard cable. This is the touchpad connector. And this is the keyboard connector. Disconnect the cables. Remove the screws that hold the motherboard. Remove the screw that holds the Wi-Fi card and disconnect the card. Lift the motherboard carefully. Press the battery to disconnect it. Disconnect the cable from the screen. This is the motherboard of the Asus X540M. This is the charger connector. Connect the motherboard to the power supply. Set the multimeter to measure voltage. We can see that 19.5 volts are present here. The current should pass through these two MOSFETs and should reach this current sensing resistance. Let's check the voltage in the current sensing resistance. It has zero volts. No voltage is present here. Disconnect the bench power supply and measure the resistance. It is zero ohms. This means, there is a short on the 19 volt power line. Set the multimeter to diode mode. Measure again in the current sensing resistance. This measures 0.004 volts. We have a short on the 19 volt power line. The next step is to inject current or visually inspect the motherboard. The motherboard is small, so I'm going to do a visual inspection. Look on the board for burnt, blown, or rusted components. Those two capacitors look bad. These are rusted. Clean the area a little bit. Set the multimeter to diode mode and measure on both sides of the capacitors. This side measures 0.002. This other side also measures 0.002. To check which of these capacitors is shorted, we spray some isopropyl alcohol on the area. Set the bench power supply to 1 volt and 1 ampere. Place the black lead on ground and the red lead on one of the pins of the MOSFET that is connected directly to the capacitors. 
we can see that the liquid around these components moves. The short is in this area, but we are not sure which component is getting hot, one or both capacitors, or the MOSFET. Set the bench power supply to 3.3 volts and 1 ampere. It's not enough to see which of the components is getting hot. Set the bench power supply to 5 volts and 2 amperes. We can see that this capacitor is the one that is getting hot. Spray more isopropyl alcohol. Set the bench power supply to 19 volts and 3 amperes. Now we can see clearly which is getting hot. That does not mean that we only replace that one, the other one also looks very bad, we have to replace those two capacitors. Remove the shorted capacitor. We can do it with the soldering iron, using a tip large enough that it can touch both sides of the capacitor. Clean with isopropyl alcohol. Set the multimeter to diode mode. One side is almost zero, that side should be ground, and the other side measures 517. The short is gone. Connect the motherboard to the bench power supply. Turn on the power supply. We can see the consumption on the power supply. Set the multimeter to measure voltages, we are going to measure the voltage on the current sensing resistor. Around 19.5 volts on the current sensing resistor. Sparks came from the motherboard. There is no consumption on the power supply after the sparks. Let's do some measurements on the area of the shorted capacitor. Almost zero on both sides. This capacitor is shorted, it wasn't very clear on the video, but the sparks were from this capacitor. Let's remove this capacitor with the same method. A soldering iron tip large enough that you can touch both sides of the capacitor. Add some new solder for better heat transfer. Let's measure again. On one side we have almost zero, and on the other side 513. We are going to replace the capacitors before further testing. The capacitors are taken from a donor board identical to this board. If we do not have an identical donor board, we have to look for the specification of those capacitors in the schematics and find one with the same specification. Solder one side of the capacitors. Add flux. Apply heat with a quick station at 340 degrees Celsius. When the solder melts, the solder will pull the capacitors into place. Let it cool down a bit and clean with isopropyl alcohol. Let's measure again before connecting the power supply. One side is 496 and the other side is ground. Connect the power supply. Turn on the power supply. We can see the consumption. And here we can see the LED. Let's assemble the laptop. Connect the screen cable. Insert the motherboard carefully. We must align the battery connector properly. Connect this cable. Insert the Wi-Fi card. Let's place the screws back in place. 
Connect this cable. Connect the cable that enables motherboard and hard drive communication. Place the screws that hold the motherboard. Place the keyboard. We have to connect the touchpad and keyboard cables. Set the power supply at 19.5 volts and 3 amps. Connect the power supply. The laptop turned on. We can see that it is drawing around 1.5 amperes. It's loading the operating system. The touchpad works. Let's shut down the laptop to completely assemble it. I will further test the laptop off camera. If you liked the video, give me thumbs up. If you dislike it, leave me a comment, I would like to know why. If you have questions or suggestions, let me know in the comments section. Remember to subscribe to my channel, thank you, and see you in the next video.